Today, we will be ranking every ranged DPS in the game from easiest to hardest. And if you watched our melee rankings, you already know that being easy means having a low skill floor, but if a spec has to spend a lot of effort only to get minimal results, then it's going to be considered hard. Everything will be based on the same criteria as before, and we're looking for more than just simple damage, but also flexibility in solo shuffle and a few other criteria. And if you're watching this video looking for a new spec to play, Skill Capped has everything you need to climb rating instantly in the new season. From class guides, arena fundamentals, game knowledge, and more, our courses are specifically designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals faster than you thought possible. We do this by only working with the best and most experienced players around, who will now even review your gameplay and offer personalized advice for climbing. Everything we offer is backed up by a rank of guarantee where we literally promise you will gain rating while using our service. So what are you waiting for? Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount links below. For now, back to the video. All right, let's kick things off with Balanced Druid, who is looking to be quite strong going into Season 4. Last time we had Balanced Druid in the easy category, but we've started to rethink this entirely. Of course, doing damage as a Boomkin is pretty straightforward, as the overwhelming majority of it will come from keeping up dots and then using Star Surge while in Eclipse. That's the easy part. The hard part is the fact that using Cyclone effectively is what it truly takes to climb. Sure, anyone can keep dots up and do big damage during Incarn, but if you aren't using your clone well and rotating DRs, you aren't playing Boomkin to its full potential. Cyclone is arguably the best CC in the game, but knowing how and when to use it effectively does take some experience. Combine this with the fact that Balanced Druids have some of the highest death rates in the bracket, and it's an almost guarantee that they will be the target. On the bright side, Boomkin Burst is looking better next season thanks to the returning Season 1 tier set, so finding kills might be a bit easier with damage alone. Anyway, as a slight update to our previous rankings, we will actually put Balanced Druid on the medium difficulty tier. Augmentation Evoker has fallen off in popularity, but has that changed its ranking? At the start of Season 3, we actually had Augmentation Evoker on the very easy tier. It's important to remember that in Season 2, Augmentation practically defined the meta. After some nerfs to Aug combined with buffs to Devastation, the spec has fallen off quite a bit. The thing that made Aug so strong in Season 2 is that it buffed people's damage enough to one-shot, but after buffs to Stamina, everyone is a bit tankier, making the damage contribution of Augmentation much less impactful, which makes the spec a bit harder to play since you can't just rely on your teammates blasting the enemy team with damage. So in order to truly succeed as Augmentation, you have to have a good vision over the game, relying more on the support aspect of the spec rather than just hitting Ebon Might randomly and hoping for a one-shot. So, while the spec might have been easy in the past, it's just not strong enough on its own to have any real impact, and will be going in our medium tier difficulty. Previously, we had Devastation ranked as a harder spec to play, but this has changed for a few reasons. In the past, Dev felt pretty squishy in Arena, but not only was everyone's stamina buffed in Season 3, but Evoker passives also saw more buffs, and now Devastation has even more HP while taking less magical damage. While the spec isn't a gigabusted tank, it's definitely more durable than it was in the past, solving a key difficulty issue. On top of this, Devastation damage was buffed multiple times, and now even a simple rotational spell like Disintegrate is a huge threat on its own. One key difference between Disintegrate and other damage spells is that it will deal damage instantly, which can even proc an Eternity Surge. So even if you get kicked, you can still do a huge hit of damage. And speaking of kicks, Devastation manages them quite easily with not one, not two, but virtually five different spell schools. There's almost always something you can cast, which is a huge plus in Dragonflight, where micro CCs are everywhere. The only downside going into next season is that Devastation Burst will be slightly lower due to the loss of this season's tier set, so scoring kills might feel marginally more difficult. But Devastation was already so ahead when it comes to damage that we don't really think players will feel that much weaker, especially since mastery scaling will be so high next season. Anyway, after multiple quality of life improvements and some gigabusted damage, Devastation will be going all the way up to the easy tier. Speaking of easy, last time we had BM Hunter in the easiest tier, but will that hold up in Season 4? In short, yes. Beast Mastery Hunter is arguably one of the most beginner-friendly specs in the game, and we highly doubt that will ever change. The ability to seamlessly do damage on the move is a massive advantage in PvP, considering all the micro-disruptions most casters have to deal with. While it might not have the strongest defensive kit, BM Hunters can easily avoid damage against other ranged specs by just peeking in and out of LOS. The BM Hunter win condition hasn't really changed in the past decade, and with more and more players swapping over to Diamond Dice and Solo Shuffle, traps breaking to random AoE is becoming less of an issue. So as one of the most beginner-friendly specs in the game, BM Hunter will be returning back to the very easy tier. On the other hand, Mark's Hunter suffers a few key problems that BM doesn't have to deal with. 
Marx is the quintessential noob slayer, and it's no wonder the spec is extremely pervasive in random BGs, where many players fall victim to consumable buffed sniper shots like it's a Call of Duty deathmatch. In Arena, Mark's damage is definitely scary, and sniper shot can easily catch people off guard, but unlike BM, Mark's damage is much easier to stop. Between disarms and other forms of micro CC, dealing optimal damage as Mark's is slightly more challenging and exposes the spec to significantly more damage. So despite its reputation as a noob slayer, Marks will barely miss the easiest tier. Speaking of getting slain by hunters, let's move on to our three mage specs. Arcane is one of those specs you tend to see in tournaments and on the high end of the ladder, which can be a bit deceiving. Although Arcane can do really well when played by high rated players, its playstyle is rather unforgiving for beginners. As one of the few remaining specs limited to a single damage spell school, getting interrupted is extremely punishing. Because of this, to excel as an Arcane Mage, you need to adopt an extremely evasive playstyle, utilizing your full mobility toolkit in order to stay out of fights. This can make scoring kills a bit of a challenge, as you don't really have the ability to aggressively push in for CC. And while Season 4 will include the return of the AoE Arcane Missiles tier set, Arcane Burst is just significantly more janky compared to other casters, and its win condition is based more on attrition and dampening. So as a conceptually backwards spec, Arcane will be returning to the very hard tier once again. For a while, Fire was definitely one of the most challenging specs to play, especially in Solo Shuffle. Prior to game-wide stamina buffs, Glass Cannon presented a massive challenge for Fire Mage, especially during times where Mark's Hunters were quite pervasive. Even though Fire might still feel squishier compared to the other two Mage specs, it's definitely more forgiving than the past. And after a set of damage buffs in early March, Fire now has enough burst to actually feel competitive. Just like Arcane, the playstyle of Fire might feel a bit awkward still, since it's based around blinking backwards the entire game, but at least now games will feel winnable, and in some lobbies, it's even possible for Fire to top damage. So after getting a few buffs, we feel justified putting Fire on a tier above Arcane. These days, Frost is the most accessible mage spec, having more consistent control than both Fire and Arcane in melee heavy lobbies. Ever since the buff to Frost Bomb in 10.2, Frost has also gained more reliable burst, as it's now no longer reliant on Ray of Frost alone or the clunky Glacial Spike in order to land kills. What really makes Frost the most forgiving mage spec in Solo Shuffle is simply having two ice blocks. Immunities are disproportionately strong in the bracket, since they lose almost no value going into deep dampening. And even though Frost damage is limited to a single school, it's still far easier to manage interrupts compared to Arcane. So as the most beginner-friendly mage spec, Frost will be going right above Arcane in the hard tier. At times, Shadow was considered a victim spec, and this might be the case next season. In the past, Shadow was more or less a support spec, not really having the damage to close out games on its own, but instead contributing to kills with micro CC and being able to support their healer with utility. All of this is a lot of responsibility to juggle. Season 3 was pretty interesting since Shadow picked up a tier set that actually gave it some kill power, with the ability to mind spike Catharsis people for a huge hit of damage. But since this will be lost going into Season 4, it might feel significantly harder to find win conditions. Because of this, Shadow Priest will be returning to the hardest tier for another season. Next up is Elemental Shaman, who was a pretty challenging spec to rank on this list. Doing damage on Ellie is pretty straightforward, and you can get by with only using three damage buttons. Just keep up Flame Shock, Lava Burst with procs, and Dump Maelstrom with Earth Shock. That's pretty much it. Since all of this is instant, you don't have to worry too much about interrupts. But just like Balance Druid, the hard part of Ellie is everything else, and in order to do well in the spec, you really need to have a good view over the arena, being consistent with Wind Shears, Micro CCing with Static Field Totem, Earth Grab, and Lightning Lasso, and then making the most out of your utility toolkit. Shaman is also very likely to get trained in melee heavy lobbies, and can struggle to stay alive without proactive defensive play. So despite its damage being relatively easy, everything else is enough to balance out Ellie on the moderate tier. Our last class is Warlock, whose three specs have varying levels of difficulty. With the addition of Jinx in 10.2, Affliction saw a big dip in its difficulty curve. This single BVP talent saves Warlock's two entire globals and cuts down on the amount of maintenance typically associated with dot-based specs. On the flip side, Affliction is still a true one-school spec, since Soul Rot was recently converted from the Nature School to the Shadow Spell School. As a result, Affliction Warlocks are punished more by interrupts now more than ever. Conceptually, Affliction will continue to be the same spec going into Season 4 and is more or less a spectator in Arena. It doesn't really have the agency to win games on its own, but as long as you can just maximize AoE pressure, avoid interrupts, and have effective ports, you are doing 90% of the work as an Affliction Warlock. Because of this, Affliction will be returning back to the medium difficulty tier. Demo Warlock was another difficult spec to place on this list. 
On one hand, it seems like a fair amount of players are able to cruise to 1800 with the spec, compared to Affliction where getting to 1800 is more impressive benchmark. So what explains the difference? Throughout the expansion, Demo has seen a pretty dramatic shift up and down our tier list, having its peak in Season 1 where it was arguably the best ranged spec in the game for Solo Shuffle. While it was eventually nerfed, the spec did see a redesign in 10.2, which overall made it a bit more fluid to play, including a shorter cooldown on Tyrant, giving Demo Warlocks more frequent but less impactful cooldown windows. Demo still has a convenience factor stemming from the fact that it deals good passive damage with its pets alone, while also having multiple spell schools, which we've stressed is a key part of being easier to play in the modern metagame. So, given the fact that so many players continue to cruise to 1800 with Demo compared to other ranged specs, it will be going in the easy difficulty tier. That brings us to Destro Warlock, which was arguably the MVP caster of Season 3. While Destro does have to do a bit of hard casting and dot maintenance with Immolate, the spec still does an absurd amount of damage through instant casts alone. And with the return of the Season 3 tier set, Destro instant cast damage will continue to be strong going to the next patch. People tend to underestimate just how much damage a single portal can do, so being able to slam all three and get RNG resets makes Destro damage really scary and unpredictable. Like every Warlock spec, the key to truly succeeding as Destro is not just damage, but being very consistent with good defensive play. As long as you're looking out for your healer in CC, being able to quickly port away or pop Dark Pact on high HP is what separates good and bad Warlock players. So if you can stick to some simple defensive rules and land a few Immolate casts, Destro Warlock is a pretty easy spec to play. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll see you back soon.